during this very challenging time where we had to be forced to be separate from our friends and our colleagues, I was really grateful for this Anchor app, which has allowed me to continue the podcast after almost one year of working on it. Uh, It's free. You simply go to anchor.fm and download the app. And there you'll find all the tools that you need to record and edit your podcast, as well as to invite people onto your podcast through the app. Uh, Anchor also distributes the podcast for you on Apple, Spotify, and many other platforms. You have absolutely nothing to do except to record your podcast. Uh, If you have an ad like this, you can also make money. Uh, It's everything you need to make a podcast in one place. Uh, I would recommend it for anyone who wants to get their voice out there, has something to contribute, go for it. Anchor.fm is where you go to download the free app and to get started. Good luck with your podcast. Hi, good morning. How are you doing? Thank you. How are you? Good. How are yeah. things uh, over there with you? Well, yeah, it's good. It's good. I'm, um, you know, I, I came here for uh, uh, not a very joyful occasion because uh, my um, my mother's uh, fiance uh, just passed away. Mm-hmm. So, um, you know, but it's nice to be in Paris. And um, uh, yeah, how are you? Good. Good. You know, I was thinking about your name. Can you tell me your whole name and how you got that name, Tinko? Yeah, so my my full name, uh, well, actually, my full name is Konstantin Shwatopolk Chetvertinsky. But um, uh, they call me Tinko since I'm a, I'm a baby. Um, I think they, I think my mom and, uh, you know, the, the girl who was looking after me uh, thought Konstantin was a bit... Um, serious for a little baby so they would call me constant constantino or i think constantinko which is like a sort of a polish way of uh uh you know like a polish diminutive of the name and -hmm. then they just kept tinko so yeah that became um it became my name so your roots are polish but you are belgian yeah, so actually my dad uh, is Polish. Well, he's Belgian, but he was born in Poland uh, just before the war um, mm-hmm. of two Polish parents. And my mm-hmm. my mom is uh, half Icelandic and half Czech. Oh, uh, but they met in Belgium and um, and we I was born in Belgium. Yeah, so tell us about your childhood growing up in Belgium and how uh, your artistic life started there. Well, so actually, when I was so I was born and I went straight away to uh, England and then to India. Um, I think I went to England when I was a few months old, uh, and I arrived in India when I was two years old. Um, and I stayed there until I believe it was five or six, uh, and then we went to Bangladesh, and then I only really came back to Belgium when I was seven years old. Um, so, and that's actually when I started even speaking French because I used to speak, uh, I, 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 I grew up, um, you know, speaking English uh, with my mm-hmm. parents and my grandparents. Mm-hmm. Uh, I used to speak English with, um, with uh, an Indian accent actually because I was going in, um, in India in a, in a local uh, <laughs> kindergarten. So I, I used to speak with a little bit of an Indian accent. <laughs> <laughs> that's, that's funny actually but what were your parents doing there uh my my father was a diplomat so uh this is what was you know uh, bringing him to all these different places mm-hmm. um this is also what led me to brazil because uh uh my my parents actually had lived in brazil already uh before uh, i was born Mm-hmm. And um, it's funny because they used to speak Portuguese when they didn't want me and my brother to understand what they were saying. That was their their language uh, that they would use. And, mm-hmm. um, and then when I was uh, 14, uh, my dad got posted to uh, 
to Brazil. Uh, prior to that, he went to Nigeria as well, but we didn't actually move to Nigeria because we were in school, in a, in a boarding school in Belgium. So mm -hmm. we went quite a lot to Nigeria, but we didn't actually live there full time. Uh, but my dad did. And uh, then when he went to Brazil, he, you know, he offered us to, um, to join him. So uh obviously you know we said yes and um mm -hmm. and so that's the first time i arrived in brazil when i was 14 uh which is when i also started learning portuguese and uh, mm -hmm. i spent two years there um and uh from 14 to 16 and my dad mm -hmm. so then i went back to belgium to finish my my high school uh, mm -hmm. But my dad stayed there for another two years, so we would go back there. So we had this sort of four-year period where we were, you know, either living there or spending all our vacations there and, um, you know, discovering the country, traveling quite a lot um, up and down Brazil. Yeah, amazing, amazing. I mean, now that I know this backstory, I understand the context of your work a lot better. Mm -hmm. So I think for our listeners, maybe you can describe what your work is like, uh, the different types of photography you do and uh, where you are right now in your career. Mm -hmm. um, so I, I mean, I, I have uh, different, you know, different aspects of, of photography that I that I work with. Uh, not, I, I don't think there's an order of one which is necessarily more important than the other. You, though now, mm -hmm. I'm dedicating myself more to the the artistic production, um, mm -hmm. but I also do a lot of portraits um, for private clients. So mm -hmm. uh, I I travel to mainly to the Middle East, um, but I also do I also shoot a lot of portraits for magazines in um, in Brazil or in Europe um, but in this private photography it's mainly in the Middle East uh, mm -hmm. and um, and so this is something that I enjoy a lot because it's you know uh, portraiture is is one of my favorite um, sides of photography I think it's something where um, I have a hard time to describe it but I, I believe there's something that I'm able to capture in people in portraits which uh, which I find very, um, you know, satisfying, very yeah, satisfying. So. Yeah. And very, um, uh, I don't know, like it's, I, I feel like often the portraits that I take of people tell a story or they, 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 sh they represent them very well. Um, so I think it's, um, it's a talent that I have with portraits. Um, mm -hmm. and then there's also the, uh, editorial work, which is, uh, you know, whether it's travel photography or, uh, editorial fashion as well, and commercial work, which I've done for a few um, a few brands like Zara Home or fashion brands, uh, collaborations with Chanel or with um, Versace, other other type of projects, um, mm -hmm. and a bit all over the world in Brazil, in Dubai, in in Italy, uh, in France. So um, uh, this is something that I enjoy a lot because I think you know traveling the world capturing beautiful things and, and creating this uh, sort of alchemy of, you know, the art director and the model and the makeup artist and uh, the client and, you know, having this sort of this blend of, um, of talents that, that mm -hmm. create something. I think it's quite, quite satisfying as well. Um, it's also challenging, but, in, you know, it's, uh, it's enjoyable. And so, um, now I think with the the pandemic, uh, you know, I've I've um, I'm focusing more on the artistic uh, side because I think it's also mm -hmm. something which, uh, you know, and and the natural cycle that I'm going through is leading me to to go more in this direction. Yes, and I this whole nature photography. Mm -hmm. I know I've seen uh, some of the recent work. And it still has this aspect of the portrait when you photograph a person, mm -hmm. but it, it is incorporating a lot of nature and a lot of, uh, I guess, what you would call art. Mm -hmm. So I think that's what I will use as an image for uh, promoting the podcast on social media. But I'll check with you after. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh. 
So can you tell us some of your favorite uh, Brazilian and Belgian artists, some influences perhaps in your own life uh, for your art? Um, I mean, influences, I think there's there, there are so many, but um, in terms of artists, um, current artists that I really appreciate, uh, um, in photography, there's a, uh, one, for me, one of the best photographers in Brazil, who also happens to be a good friend of mine, uh, we've had a, a joint exhibition um, two years ago in Sao Paulo. Uh, his name is Urso Morto. Uh, his real name mm-hmm. is Fabricio Brambati, but uh, his artist's name is Urso Morto, um, which means dead bear. Uh, and he he has a really beautiful way of capturing Brazil in a, in a very uh, crude, poetic, uh, but but sort of it's it's tough but it's also very beautiful so um i I think he's got something Mm. a bit almost like a sort of a nan golden of the brazilian interior of brazil um uh, then Mm. there's uh enrique oliveira is a brazilian sculptor that i really that i really like Uh, he he i haven't seen uh, I haven't seen a lot of him uh, recently uh, but he Mm -hmm. used to be i think about 10 years ago when i when I um, started going more often to São Paulo, he was quite active, and uh, he makes these monumental sculptures with wood, um, which are really, really beautiful and um, and quite uh, uh, special. Um, mm-hmm. And then there's a painter which I really like called Thiago Carneiro da Cunha, which is a uh, I don't know a lot about him, actually. I, I saw a few of his paintings at friends' houses, and I, I follow him on Instagram, and I really enjoy his, his, his style. Um, mm-hmm. In terms of Belgian artists, um, there's, a, there's one artist that's called, uh, I think, Bormans is his name. He's a painter as well, um, mm-hmm. which I really like. Uh, but in terms of influences, I think, uh, you know, even some art that I don't like can influence me in a way. Uh, so it's, uh, it's hard to sort of pin down, um, you know, what, what, yes, yes. Yes. Um, I'm going to ask you about the 12 masters project. I just had an idea for another question, Mm -hmm. um, more personal, but let's see if I get back to that later as well. But tell us about the 12 masters project that you worked on, uh, a year, a few years ago. Yeah, so the 12 Masters Project was um, a group of friends of mine started a foundation uh, called Le Ciel Foundation, and they uh, had this uh, beautiful project which was to uh, go to the encounter and to, um, to produce a meeting of 12 indigenous masters, um, which would happen at the UN in 2017 uh, and so this mm-hmm. project started in 2016 and we traveled uh, to I think maybe 15 or 17 countries uh, in one year um, mm-hmm. always quite uh, you know quite uh, quick trips which would last you know from two to four days in each country and we would go to the encounter of these masters to to get to know them and also to ask them if they would like to participate in this um, in this meditation and so it was a really was a really beautiful invitation um, and it was a very special you know moment for me um, it was very interesting because as a photographer uh, you a lot of times you either have a client which you have to satisfy uh, mm-hmm. and you have yourself as well, which is, you know, your, your own um, kind of, um, you know, you have to, you have to do things that you enjoy and that you approve of, or, you know, are, are even if it's just, you know, artistically and it's not necessarily for a job, but you have to, um, you know, do something that, that, um, how do you say, uh, well, that uh, that does the job that you are expecting, and um, right, right, right. And f- with this project, it was really interesting because uh, 
uh, I was not doing it for someone and I was not doing it for myself either. Uh, it really felt like, you know, my, my purpose was to document this in, uh, in um, you know, the most uh, sort of pure, uh, uh, obviously, you know, beautiful, interesting way. But um, mm -hmm. uh, I didn't have this, you know, and I, I've never had a project like that where, you know, I, I didn't have any any clients or even myself to satisfy it was really it felt very you know uh, like liberating yeah liberating yeah maybe that's the word i saw that movie actually now that you mention it and it was an extremely inspiring movie uh and i will have to to see it again i think mm -hmm. i mean a big part of my whole uh life is dedicated to the awareness of all these indigenous people and their wisdom and how we can incorporate that into our first world lifestyles and support their communities mm -hmm. from our perspective. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, um, oh. it's interesting to see also, you know, uh, how, you know, when you travel so, so fast around the world um, and you, you, you know, it feels kind of instantaneous, you know, like all of a sudden you're in uh, Ethiopia and then three days later you're in Botswana um, and you you also kind of realize how you know there's all, all these cultures are living at the same time as us but we've created this sort of idea that some people are living in the past or some people are you know uh, uh, living in a sort of a parallel world but we're all living at the same time on the same on the same planets but with very different uh, tools to 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 live our lives and um, and so it's quite mm -hmm. interesting to see you know to witness all these different ways of living and these different ways of um, of you know being conscious of what what we're doing on earth well it's it's interesting that you brought that point up because you know when I look back at my time in Brazil when we first met I am happy with the idea of returning and finding that community and that fun and what you just said reminds me that that was a specific time and it may not be the same the next time I go or the next time or the next time because everything's mm -hmm. changing mm -hmm. you know mm -hmm. but anyways so tell us uh, what your plans are for the future I know you've had shows uh, exhibitions in Europe and the Middle East and South America um, in terms of the artistic creation, where do you think you want your work to go next? Ah, well, I was hoping you would have a crystal ball and you would tell me. Uh... <laughs> <laughs> well, well, I think, you know, we, we will have that conversation <laughs> off, uh, offline after. I, I mean, now that you have a little time, I guess I'm assuming you have some time while you're in Paris. We could take a few minutes um, off, off air and discuss yeah, that. No, no, I, uh, well, I think that, you know, I, the way I see it, um, also, you know, regarding uh, my relationship to nature and, and my photography as well, I, I've just, uh, uh, I now have um, a place in a, in a beautiful region that you know in Pisinguaba, uh, where uh, I've been mm -hmm. spending more time. And uh, mm -hmm. so when I'm in Brazil, I will probably be spending more time in this place. Uh, which is in the Mata Atlantica mm -hmm. um, uh, natural reservation, one of the most beautiful mm -hmm. places in the world, in my opinion, and also the richest uh, bio, I don't know how you call it, uh, bio diverse, diverse uh, yeah. regions of the world. Mm -hmm. um, and mm -hmm. so, you know, I've always been very uh, connected with nature and, you know, I've always um, photographed nature a lot. Uh, but always coming back to my home, which is, uh, you know, either in, um, in, in Europe or in Brazil, in, in a city. And so, um, mm -hmm. um, you know, now when I'm in Brazil, I'm really, you know, waking up in, in this nature. So I'm actually much more uh, involved in it. And so I'm, um, I'm, I'm trying to understand how you know, how I'm, how this is going to develop in my work as well. Uh, it's, uh, you know, the relationship has been, has, has sort of been upgraded. Um, you know, I'm just dipping in yes, and out. Yes. Now I'm really in there. So, um, so let's see, let's see how this um, inspires me and how it, you know, uh, 
transpires in, in my work. How it, yes, I, I'm curious to see how it will lead you as well, because I think on some level, um, we have to also allow ourselves to be directed by natural forces, just mm-hmm. to, you know, leave it a little bit vague. But our intuition is a good tool to guide us. Yes when we're figuring out how to move yes. forward. Well, there's always, uh, for um, me, there's I... also something, you know, when I'm, I can, I can be very contemplative in nature. And, um, mm-hmm. you know, as an artist, uh, we need to create and to uh, make, make things happen. And, um, and so this is also something that, um, you know, that I'm, um, I'm looking into because it's sort of making me think about, you know, the, 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 the 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 reason behind art and you know the reason behind uh, the necessity of creating these images because me myself I'm I'm in, I'm confronted with this nature all the time uh, and I have mm-hmm. it in 3D in front of me alive and so it's uh, it's it's not as it was before where I would you know uh, I would really enjoy to have a picture of nature in my living room, whereas now I would rather just be there uh, at the waterfall and and live that nature. So, um, yes, so this is yes, also yes. interesting to see, you know, how I mean, it's bringing a lot of questions about, you know, how how to relate with with uh, depiction and with art. Yes. So tell me, because I didn't, you don't have any children, right? Uh, no, right? not yet. Oh, okay. And are yes, you married? Yes, I'm married. I think you met Paula uh, the oh. day, the day we had lunch before you you left. That... Um, she had she just arrived from Sao Paulo. Right. Yes. Oh, yes, yes, yes. I barely spoke to her, but I remember the mm-hmm. woman. Yes. I I asked because we didn't really talk about any of that stuff. We were just having a good time. We didn't have the questions really of what mm-hmm. do you do? Uh, you know, what's your situation? We didn't go into specifics. We were so much mm-hmm. in the moment. Mm-hmm. I mean, and that that's, that's beautiful too. But okay, now I kind of understand the big picture of you and how you work and where you're uh, possibly going in the next. So how long are you going to be in Paris? Uh, well, I'm, I'm in Paris until uh, Tuesday. Until, sorry, until next Monday. Yeah. Mm-hmm. And then are you going to go uh, Yes, Belgium? yes. I'm actually going to Belgium tomorrow. Um, and, uh, mm-hmm. and then on, uh, on Tuesday, I'm, I'm sorry, on next Monday, I'm going back to mm-hmm. Brazil. I have to fix, you know, I still have some things mm-hmm. to fix in the house. And um, so, mm-hmm. yeah. Mm-hmm. Yeah. yeah. All right. Well, is there anything I didn't address that you would like to talk about before we end uh, the um, call? I mean, not that I've. No, I think uh, I think it was a nice sort of. Uh, I think it was a nice uh, overview of you know the the questions that you sent me. Uh, yes. Um. I might add. You know, just like you, t- I asked you about the influences that. Uh, you've had with other mm-hmm. artists, uh, European or mm-hmm. South American. I have seen your influence on a local artist, oh, yeah. Oseas. Um, he, as he spoke so highly about mm-hmm. you, and you know, I, I admired what he was doing, uh, making his local arts mm-hmm. or crafts, mm-hmm. and uh, like for example, the whistle that you brought him, the sort of shamanistic oh, yeah. uh, water yeah. whistle. Yeah, yeah. And uh, he mentioned other things that you would bring back from, like, let's say, Sao mm-hmm. Paulo, as a because he can't find those things out there so easily mm-hmm. in the countryside. Mm-hmm. So I, I'm, I'm really happy to see this exchange in uh, humans and in culture and in yeah, space. I think it's definitely a, a mutual uh, inspiration because he's also, um, you know, he's, uh, he's someone that, uh, as, you, as you know, because you've spent some time with him, uh, very... Uh, very mm-hmm. inspiring as well, you know, as a, a sort of a real local yeah. Caesada person who has this connection mm-hmm. with nature. Um, yeah, uh, you know, yes. one of the the people that we uh, we visited uh, in the Twelve Masters project was Master Atom Ribenga uh, from Gabon, who's mm-hmm. um, also a very very inspiring master. Um, and mm-hmm. uh, I think there's a there's part of an interview of his in the movie 
Uh, but um, mm -hmm. yeah, it's um, also something that was quite interesting during this whole these whole trips was the idea of you know traveling, going uh, around the world, uh, but also mm -hmm. you know going within because you know all of this uh, all of all of these trips were also a great sort of self discovery. Uh, process and so um, you know the more, the more you know the yes. idea of going very far but also going very very close inside and, and going very deep within myself with the help of you know these encounters with these masters and, um, and mm -hmm. the funny thing is you know there was one mm -hmm. uh, one of the last well actually the last trip uh, I did um, because we had most of them uh, accepted the invitation uh, I think there were two mm -hmm. who, who declined, uh, and one of them mm -hmm. I visited, uh, in, in, I think it was the last trip I did before going to New York for the, the meditation and the, the auction, because there was an auction uh, at uh, Phillips. Uh, they, they had an mm -hmm. exhibition in London, in Paris, and in New York, and then they had the auction in New York. Uh, and it had some it had works mm -hmm. from um, many uh, artists that I admire a lot, like uh, Claude Jean Dujar, who was actually one of my big mm -hmm. um, Brazilian inspirations as well in photography, which I forgot to mention. You know, she's a mm -hmm. woman who photographed mm -hmm. the Yanomami uh, territory uh, in the 70s, 80s, and uh, she also not only was she photographing. Uh, these places, but she was also helping to create protected zones for these indigenous people to to be able to survive. Um, so she's she's a very inspiring lady, and so she was also participating in the mm. auction. Ernesto Neto as well, um, and so mm -hmm. um, anyways, sorry, I'm 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 going ahead. But... No, no, no. This is all. This is this is all very uh, yeah. interesting and and part and, and parcel. So, uh, sure. yeah, so so yeah. So the the last trip was to go visit a master in Thailand. Who, um, who you know, I arrived there, and uh, it was a beautiful afternoon. It was there was a blue background, sort of baby blue, and this you know Buddhist monk was sitting in front of it with uh, sort of a four or five o'clock light very golden sunshine uh, glistening through leaves and uh, making these beautiful shadows behind him and he was in his orange uh robe and it was it, it was such a beautiful image a beautiful picture uh which i didn't take because um you know i wanted to ask him first if uh, yeah, i could take his portrait yes 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 uh, but so this encounter was yes. already really beautiful just arriving there and seeing the scene and all these colors and this sort of you know this moment uh but in the end we after an hour of negotiating he didn't want to to have his picture taken i think he had uh, decided not to participate um in the in the in the meditation, well, he had decided not to travel, so uh, yeah. I'm I'm not sure exactly if he was still participating from afar, but uh, the final word was that he didn't want to have his portrait taken, and so uh, after an mm -hmm. hour of um, you know negotiating with uh, another person who spoke English who was there to help us, um, you know, there was a final no. And I tried the last time, you know, I said, I came all the way from Brazil and to, to take your portrait, if you don't mind, <laughs> just, you know, I take the portrait and then if you don't want me to use it, I will not use it. And, and um, mm -hmm. he, he wasn't having any of it. And then the, the translator looked at us and said, you can take the picture with your eye and keep it in your heart. <laughs> Which was uh, wow. which was actually wow. really funny and uh, and made you know made the whole trip worth it uh, because you know it's it, there's always this questioning as a photographer of you know what it is that you're doing and what what you're you know what um, at least in in, in me uh, you know what is the, the point of photography yes, yes, and yes. you know what is this uh, what is this action of you know, freezing this moment in a specific way and, and you know, translating it afterwards. And so, uh, and so the idea yes. of, you know, being told, 
after having crossed the whole world to take the picture with my eye and keep it in my heart was, uh, <laughs> was uh, the humor was not lost on me. <laughs> <laughs> well, it's funny because Osea said almost the same thing to me because I was like, shoot, I have to keep my camera out all the time. He's like, you don't have to photograph everything. Because <laughs> well, I know Beirut is a great influence in your art. Tell me a little bit about Beirut and how you started taking pictures there. Yeah, so I, I, my, my father went to Beirut. Um, I think this was in... Uh, 1998 um, and so I, I went with him and at the same time I started uh, I think in 1999 to study at uh, Central St. Martin's in London um, and so I had this sort of period of about six months w uh, prior to that where I was in Beirut with my dad uh, and it was a very um, it's a place that inspires me a lot because um, you know, first of all, it's a, it's a beautiful place, uh, it's got a lot of history, a lot of culture, and it has this recent um, war, well, it had, it's had a lot of, you know, conflicts, uh, you know, mm -hmm. it's in the Middle East, and uh, also, you know, recent, but also in uh, ancient times, you know, all the, all the big armies passed through there, the Crusades, uh, mm -hmm. There are some places where you have, you know, these stones which which uh, mark the passage of, you know, Napoleon and uh, I think and um, you know other armies. Uh, mm -hmm. Alexander. Um, I have to check if Napoleon is uh, correct. Uh, maybe maybe we'll have to edit that. But anyways, uh, it's a place mm -hmm. which has a lot of this history and um, and. Uh, I was fascinated by, you know, all these broken buildings and, you know, all these, these buildings with uh, bomb holes and bullet holes. And, um, you know, there's something quite interesting because at the same time you have Roman ruins, you have these old Roman temples. Uh, so you have these old ruins and then you have these new ruins, uh, which were from, uh, a f you know, a few years uh, ago. So, mm -hmm. um, and there was also still a war situation. So I, I also lived through a, a night of bombing uh, from the southern neighbor who, um, you know, bombed a place very close to my house. So the whole house shook and then they came back to, to kill the, the firemen who were putting off the fire. So there was a second bombing, you know, which shook the house again. Crazy. And, uh, we, you know, we, we witnessed uh, the, the whole night, you know, like on CNN, this, but in front of our house and, you know, uh, I'm in the city that's uh, beyond our kind of terrace. Um, what we, year was this? What year was, what? I think this was in uh, two, this was in 1999 or in 2000. Okay. Uh, yeah. There, there was like, uh, you know, there was a, there was a state of war. There was, um, there was an occupation going on and. Mm -hmm. uh, there were like uh, skirmishes so um, yeah. you know, every now and then you would have like a bombing or uh, sometimes the, the the planes would fly over Beirut just to break the sound barrier and and break windows and give old ladies heart attacks and so it was this, crazy you know you have this this sort of you know very tense thing happening and at the same time it's all this beauty and you know these beautiful weather and uh, food and, you know, very passionate people. Uh, and then also, you know, all this, all these ruins. And so I started photographing these ruins. Um, I was studying graphic design at Central St. Martins uh, during that mm -hmm. time. And so I, I, I remember I did a project, a typography project where I was photographing all these letters from the shops, you know, those sort of um, the, 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 the shop shop front um, signs and so I created an alphabet all, all with these broken uh, signs which are remnant from the from the war um, and I also had this project which was called La Siesta where I found um, you know this hotel this beachside resort uh, which mm -hmm. I visited which was completely abandoned and, and you know half destroyed uh, mm -hmm. and I, I met this the, the, one of the janitors who used to work at the hotel when it was still active and he was still living there and um, he gave me an old brochure uh, a pre-war brochure of the hotel and so I recreated the same pictures 
and the same angles uh, and recreated this brochure, but with the, 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 the actual pictures. Um, and so I had this sort of uh, this fascination with, you know, time and the effects of time and, and you know, the, 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 how, how these ruins and these sort of scars uh, teach us something or are like a sign of, you know, times going by. Um, and this is something that, you know, I, I think is, has been quite uh, present in my work because even now I have one of my main series, which is called 64T, in which I use expired film, uh, expired mm -hmm. tungsten film to uh, photograph plants. Um, and so the, the fact that this film is a uh, tungsten film it gives it a bit of a, well, it has a sort of a blue uh, hue. And mm -hmm. um, and the fact that it's expired makes it uh, grow towards purple. So depending on how expired it is and how you know it was uh, preserved or not, um, you know it, mm -hmm. it has a it has different ways of chemically uh, straying and 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 getting into these other tones, other hues, uh, usually towards purple or or blue. And um, and for me, it's a it's a beautiful sort of uh, mirror of of these natural subjects, which are also, you know, decaying. Um, mm -hmm. You know, if you if you go into the if you go in if you look at, for example, a palm tree, there's these beautiful uh, leaves coming out, and there's always some leaves falling down, and so there's this sort of cycle of nature and. and this series 64T kind of represents that, you know, with the, the you see this color, which is a result of a, of a, of a natural process of decay. And so, and so that, that I, I think that probably also uh, this interest for, for this beauty of, uh, of decay also must, must have started in Beirut, which is also the place where I started really photographing. So I think that's where I, um, you know, I used to, I used to take a pictures, you know, once in a while, mm -hmm. but when I arrived in Beirut, that's really where I started, you know, photographing a lot and, and, you know, going around, I would drive around the whole city and uh, the country, even, um, you know, taking pictures. So, um, right. Yeah. You know. And uh, now you're working on a book I heard, uh, the, 12 yeah so masters. so now actually i'm i'm working on uh on a book for the 12 uh you know for this project um that i did two years ago um and you know i've i've it's had the pictures were exhibited um and but i would like to make a book and i would like to you know uh honor it in um in a way in which you know give it give it its right uh um, uh, put it put it in a nice format, you know, for to share with people. So, I'm still working on, you know, the how to format it because it's there's so much, so many pictures, and you know, there's so many different ways of telling the story. So, right. um, this is um, this is something that I'm working on at the moment. And, okay. Um, I'm also working on a book called uh, World of Interiores, which is a series of uh, simple Brazilian interiors. Um, which I've been collecting, you know, uh, along the years, and uh, mm -hmm. and so it's a it's a kind of um, uh, it's um, you know it's World of Interiores like the like the magazine World of Interiors, but yes. in a Brazilian way, and uh, it's showing you know these simple interiors, which uh, are not at all you know the Italian palazzos or the sort of. Um, uh, English manners that you would have in uh, in in the World of Interiors magazine, but uh, which also have their charm and their sort of they, they can also be quite inspiring in their use of colors and they show this very simple and fun and and playful Brazilian way of decorating their houses. Nice, nice. So those are two projects we uh, can look forward to in the coming uh, months and years. Yes, definitely. Okay, cool. Well, again, thank you for taking this time to speak to us. I, I really can't wait until we meet again. And uh, yeah, for sure. Let's have a talk and see what uh, what we can come up with. Some fun project to do. Definitely, definitely. Always good to talk to you, Nicolette. And yes, have a good uh, have a good end of your Sunday. Yes, and you enjoy yours too. Thank Take you. care. Thank you. Bye bye. I'll talk soon. Bye. bye.